Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, welcome to the video, my name is Altamir. Um, so we're going to be talking today about um, an update on the server multi-threading. Um, Matt Floor just updated us a few days ago on the 5th, so let's just dive right into it. Um, it is approaching mid-year, and time to give an update on how our multi-threaded work is going. If you remember, back at the end of last year, I gave the news that we would be performing an ongoing series of server work aimed at spreading out our ESO processes um, across more PCU cores, with the goal that it would result in a substantial increase in server performance. Over update 37, launched back in March, and in update 38, we have completed some of this work. Initial metrics, however, show that these steps in multi-threading are not having as much of a performance improvement as desired. <clears throat> so we had to roll back on the process changes because it in introduced an unacceptable level of instability. Fortunately, the recent upgrade to server hardware has resulted in more customer-facing server performance improvements than any of our multi-threading work in all public realms where we've completed the work. Xbox EU is still scheduled for later this year. In fact, the recent White Strix Mayhem event in May showed just how much fun ESO PvP is with the new hardware in place. <clears throat> all this to say, we continue to look for areas to spread Processes to optimize our server CPU capabilities. Please remember that we must be very, very careful when making changes of, of this complexity to ESO's massive code base. However, we will continue to dedicate resources to keep analyzing and looking for ways to utilize multi-threading to improve server performance. And we will update everyone on any success successes that we have when we find solutions thank you for being the best community in gaming okay so getting ready into it here um <clears throat> i mean i like that the that they're communicating this you know that they admitted that they um they had a setback they're not at least in this particular post they're not really afraid to say that you know this wasn't going the way that we wanted it to so we're going to roll it back and make improvements and go like that's one thing i'll say like zenimax they don't really communicate as much as they should but when they do it tends to be they tend to admit fault when there is some at least when most likely they legally can you know so it's really interesting, but what, um, I don't know, what stood out to me is this one. This one here. And I'm like, I don't, see, this is where <clears throat> I'm a little puzzled. Because in the May event, I wasn't in Greyhost. I couldn't get in Greyhost. That's the way it is usually during mid-year mayhem um i was in evergloom and sometimes blackreach and the performance was fine i didn't really run in the lag but that's usually the way it is on the on the temporary servers that are brought up usually you don't really run in the lag too much at all and it runs a little bit more smoothly even in big fights so this doesn't surprise me but what does surprise me is are these the same servers are these these upgrades, is it the same servers as the as what's going on now? Because what's going on now isn't really great. So I don't know if that's just like a hiccup, bumps in the road. Obviously, there's going to be bumps in the road. For those who don't know, I think it was Matt Ferrer or Rich or somebody said in an interview, maybe it was an ESO Live, that there is 26 million lines of code. And I'm like, all right, like, you know, as much as I want to sit here and say, why can't they fix this? It's easy. 26 million. Damn. Like, all right. So I'll give him the, the benefit of the doubt with that one. 
you know, but PvP is still kind of struggling. Um, we'll have to see what happens, you know, because I don't know what I don't really know is, is this the, is this, did I just click something? Is this the, um, re-architecture work that they were talking about? You know, is that what this is? You know, I, they're really weird with this. <laughs> Someone even said, um, I believe it was in a in a guild chat, they said that they had asked in one of the ESO lives recently about is multi-threading the re-architecture and the, their post got deleted and the guy got timed out. And I'm like, why are you guys still doing this? Like, so um, I don't know, I'm curious if this is just what they've been working on for... Um, for a long time and for those of you who are sitting there like year of performance was okay but the year of performance wasn't the year of performance was planned keep this in mind okay the year of performance was was the western skyrim year really <clears throat> where they tried to balance um they tried to balance content with fixing things but when they made all these plans, because they made all these plans in like, I think we got a post in like December of that, December. And then they kind of started doing it around January or so or something like that. And what you have to keep in mind is COVID hadn't happened yet. I mean, it, it just kind of like started to take off a little bit. And then what really screwed them up that year was offices closed down. They had to work from home. So all these fixes that they intended to do now they have to do it they'd be lucky probably to do half of it because they're working from home different environment they're you know different even different like internet speeds and all these different things right i mean also communicating with everybody else and everything got delayed and delayed and delayed and then 21 2022 you started to see if you remember that everywhere you went people we were running into running into stock issues everybody was running out of stock on things there was back orders on things and groceries and just other things well they were running into that too with their hardware and that's the reason why the year performance failed it's nothing to do really with sauce and i've been critical of sauce but I'll stand up for them for that. And COVID really screwed up a lot for them. And I think part of the reason why the year, the year long stories got discontinued was because all the year long stories basically took place during COVID and they, they all had to thin out their content a lot more than probably they wanted to, to be honest. So <clears throat> getting back to, Getting back to this, I don't know if the multi-threading has anything to do with the re-architecture for PvP. Because he mentions PvP. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Like, what what does... And speaking of this part of it, we are still running into issues with PvP. But here's what I say about that. Is it our fault as players? some of this now before everyone jumps on me in the comments even though i never get comments on these stuff like this but before people jump on me what i mean is i mean just like okay um it was yesterday in gray host i'm not gonna name drop or anything like that even though i don't like this person a particular um zone leader brings pretty much their entire alliance to a keep you all know what i'm talking about in fact it, it, it's like <clears throat> it's like the definition of fact of, of, of uh, i almost said fraction faction stacking this person brings like <sighs> i can't be realistic with a number the guy brings his or girl i don't know what it is they bring their entire alliance to a keep. 
that's not PvP anymore, ladies and gentlemen. I'm 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 just sorry, it's not. Bringing a faction stack to a keep, we're talking 60, 70 players. I think is almost just as bad, you know, as ball groups. So as players, are we doing it to ourselves? Because, I mean, how many keeps are on the are, are on a map, right? How many? Uh, look, go look at the Cerdo map. How many keeps are on the map? Can you imagine? Pretty much bringing your entire alliance, everybody that's online at that time, to one keep versus spreading out, attacking multiple objectives. That's the main difference between old old PvP and new PvP. So when it comes to like the lag performance on their end, they're probably seeing... Sorry. Allergies kicking my butt. On Zoss's end, they're probably seeing improvements in lag and in performance. Where on our end, as players, whenever this faction stack shows up, all of a sudden, like in that video I showed you, it's a slideshow. Or you know, we're having a good fight like that, like that defense. I believe it was, uh, I was EP. It was against AD. It was really fun. It was going really great. Not, you know, like thing, you know, there were, there was the typical issues that we're having in combat right now. Like, um, you know, like skill delay, like you have to like switch bars or dodge roll in order to get your abilities working again, you know, stuff like that. I mean, that, that's just the bugs that we're dealing with at the moment. But, um, and that's going for PvE and PvP. But other than that, <clears throat> you know, we were having a good fight, and then all of a sudden DC showed up, and DC showed up with, like, a lot of people, and all of a sudden you, there was that video. And it's like, okay, there's, like, 14 keeps, I'm guessing, I don't know. And you show up to the one keep that has a fight? I don't know. I, I That's when, I mean, I'll, I'll go into depth on what I think about a lot of this PvP stuff probably in another video. Because I don't want to drag this one out. But, <clears throat> you know, maybe on their end, they're seeing improvements. But on our end, there's still things that we hit with lag. But you got to think, are we doing it to ourselves? You know, are we? And this is a massive game. If you've never... If you've never seen what goes into making a game, you know, I encourage you to go on YouTube and just look up people who are modding. If there's any modding videos on how to mod or... Just someone, just for some reason, they're streaming themselves modding Skyrim or something like that. Look at that. Or just talk to someone who's a coder. Now, they'll probably say that, yes, ESO has garbage code. But I think what I've always given the credit for is, sure, if they had the time, they could easily code this probably perfectly. You know, everybody that works there that codes could probably code this game absolutely perfectly and everything is great but guess what there are time restraints you know they they need to meet deadlines so they have to do what they have to do you know and they have to balance it between working and getting it done so that can't be easy but um i like that he admitted the unacceptable of instability i like that they're communicating i do wish they communicated more they've <laughs> really need to communicate more and i'm not talking about legal talk you know basically copy and pasting from something that they that's probably emailed to them from legal saying say this you know just like real like real shit real talk that's why i liked rich's streams um the creative director when he streamed i liked it because it was real talk he talked to you real and 
We asked him about PvP and he really he didn't dodge it. He told he said what was wrong. He said, you know, like he, you know, he said back in the October of the year that he got in trouble. You know, we knew before that they had found the problem because he had talked about it in his stream. And that's what I'm saying. I miss stuff like that. I miss communication. I miss the, I miss real communication and not copy paste or legalese and stuff like that. I'm going to say this was real communication. Um, probably half real, half legal, but I don't know. I like that they're communicating, but they really need to do more often. Because here's the thing. Small, small things matter. Insert joke here. No, what, <laughs> what I mean is... <laughs> Oh god, that came out so bad. Um what I mean is um size matter no <laughs> what I mean is like trivia like if they came out and they had said let's say that the multi threading isn't part of the re architecture and then Matt or Rich or Gina or someone comes out like maybe later on down here and says, Hey, I just wanna let you guys know we're still working on that re architecture. It's like what, a sentence? And that one sentence eases so many people that's what i'm talking about like small things like that like can make such a big impact size matters no i'm just kidding um like small small little communications like that can go so far just you know just saying yep we're still working on it you know some people, some people who can't be happy with anything, be like, "Where are you talking about?" But it, it, I think overall, a lot of us would be like, "Hey, cool, all right, thanks." You know, I wish they communicate, but they need to communicate more. So I like this. This was good. This was really good. I liked it. You know, because and for all the people saying, "Oh yeah," well, you know, you know, um, you have to realize that this is a business, okay. Yeah, they might not like bend over backwards or go, you know, go out of their way or whatever, but they need this to be successful to the point where they don't get reputations that some other gaming companies have, right? They don't want people, you know, like picking up their next game because whether or not like Matt Ferrer and people that work at make the Elder Scrolls Online Studio realizes even though that other game they're working on, you know, that that uh, <clears throat> their studio was working on, even though it's a completely different crew with completely different creative director and completely different community directors, everyone's different, everybody, you know, co different coders, different, you know, like whatever. This game right here, Elder Scrolls Online, is going to affect that game. People will say, ah, oh, yeah, that's the game people that made Zen that made Elder Scrolls online. Like they don't communicate with anybody. PvP is crap. Like it's, it's just gonna be the same. I'm not I'm not gonna deal with that. Screw it. You know? See what I'm saying? So they don't want that. They want good even though ESO is the cash cow. I think with the reputation that ESO was built or Zenimax is built, if ESO was a new game with that reputation that they have, I'm not sure ESO would be as successful as it is. Be that cash cow. Because a lot of people would just be like, nah, there's no attachment to the game yet. That's the beauty that's like the beauty of ESO is it kind of drags you in because the Elder Scrolls series is popular. It is, which is why Bethesda's making a stupid freaking decision on delaying their their Elder Scrolls titles. Give it to someone else. Anyway, um, the Elder Scrolls series is huge. So obviously people flock to Elder Scrolls online because they want Elder Scrolls. They want to see the Elder Scrolls world. And um, But I think that reputation, if it was already there, and then they came out with ESO, I don't even know if people would even bother. They'd be like, ah, they don't communicate that much. And even when they do, it's like robotic, like... Dumbly, you're talking to a bot, you know, and they, they, you know, I mean, when you meet them in person, they're awesome. And I, I, I have met them in person. Um, I met 
I met a lot of the devs, uh, not this year in, uh, in Vegas, but when they came to Vegas or went to Vegas in during the Western Sky of Graymore year. And a lot of them were cool. They were laid back, you know, they, and they just really like this game. They have a passion for the game, but it's the same thing. Like, you have bosses. You have to listen to your bosses whether you like it or not, you know. But that's what the one thing that I think we as players have to keep in mind with them is like, oh, they don't want to fix PvP. Yeah, they do. Why Why do they want to fix PvP? Because it brings them money. <laughs> if they finally fix PvP, you know, it, it would bring them more money. Now, I realize they probably let PvP slide for all those years because it wasn't that big of a deal. They were losing players in PvP, but they were also gaining players for PvP. So it was like, eh, it's not a big deal until Western Skyrim hit. A lot of people had lag issues way back in like 2015, 2016. I didn't, you know, and a lot of my friends really did. But there were people who did, and I feel for them because I had guildmates who had those issues, and it sucked. And I didn't know what they were talking about, really. I didn't experience what they were talking about until Graymore. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know how you guys dealt with this for the years you did, you know? So why? that's when they started to focus on it. You realize that, right? Like, when they started to focus on PvP is when they had to because it had started losing them money it, as a business. And as a business, they want to retain customers and make money. That's a duh. Of course they want to fix PvP. But yeah, they let it they let it get so bad because it hadn't affected their bottom line yet. Anyway, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, what do you guys think about this post? I think it's I think it's great, but I I wish that they communicated more. You know, we probably won't hear anything about these until after I assume that this is done. And we're probably looking at 2024 before they update us again on the multi-threading. <sighs> I don't know. I have questions about this. I do. I have real questions about this because right now in PvP, there are times where it runs great. And then there are times where it's a slideshow and it's horrible and people are crashing and... And I, ha I I really wish that I could ask them and be like, okay, on your end, you know, are you not running into these problems? Is it strictly on our end? And as players, we're doing it to ourselves. And if we are, I actually don't think Zenimax should be afraid to tell us. Could you imagine a post from Matt or something going, okay, here's what we're going to tell you about PvP. The shit that's going down is your fault. Spread the F out. You know, like, could you imagine, like, don't have 60, 70, 80 people show up to a keep that's going to run into lag issues. Obviously, don't be stupid. You know, like, if they just kind of were, like, brutally honest about it, I, I'd, I'd kind of respect it. <laughs> I'd laugh and I'd respect it, you know. But, uh, I don't know. I'd love to know if it's on their side, if they're not running into our problems. And by the way, before before I end this, part of the also reason why PvP issues lasted so long, and they have been perfectly blunt about this. I will raise my hand and say they have said this many times on ESO Lives and during, <clears throat> during live events and stuff, is they say on their end, they're not seeing the problems. They're not seeing the lag, they're not, and they can't duplicate main campaign issue, like, like, main campaign conditions with faction stacks and, and ball groups and try fights, and they can't duplicate that in, on their servers, so they can't, they couldn't find the problem because it wasn't happening, you know, and that I can relate to. You know, that I understand because there are, for a little while, I mean, I played in, hate to be, hate to admit it, but I played in Lobby for a long time, for probably like seven months because there was no lag there. We could have three bars every line. Like, Lobby used to be really active during mid year where we would get like three bars for every alliance and no lag 
at all. It was like 2014 all over again. You know, that's the reason why people stayed in lobby. But yeah. Anyway, that's it for this video. Now that I've made it way too long. Um, thank you for watching everybody. And, um, yeah, I will see you in the next one.